Did you deal. witness the but, president commit it, it, a crime? Is it your testimony today? Yes. And what crime do you uh, have you witnessed? How much time do I have to go through it? It is simple. You name the crime. Uh, Did you watch him steal something? Cor corruption statutes, it, RICO and conspiracy. What is it? Excuse me, sir. RICO is not a crime. It is a category. What I is the It's a category crime? of crimes that you're then charged You under, have charges. A long hundred You have charges. Yeah. Sir, please you want me to name, name the exact statute sir, under RICO. Yes. I'll well, that about sums up today's chaotic and embarrassing impeachment inquiry hearing on Capitol Hill. House Republicans are still trying to salvage their flailing case to impeach President Biden for something, even though they have neither evidence nor facts nor reliable witnesses. But the show must go on. It's all part of the party's desperate attempt to tarnish Biden before the November election, probably because they're nervous about their own guy's chances. And they should be. Yesterday. Voters show that while Trump still holds dominance over the Republican Party in the primaries, he also presents some pretty glaring red flags when it comes to the general election. In Florida, for instance, Trump received 81 percent of the vote, while Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley received just under 20 percent combined, despite the fact that they both dropped out of the race. To compare, Trump won nearly 94 percent of the Florida primary vote in 2020. While in Ohio, the Trump-backed Senate candidate, Bernie Moreno, won the Republican nomination over normie candidate Matt Dolan, which, if history is any indication, might be better news for Democrats than it is for Republicans. We've seen this before. Trump drags these MAGA weirdos over the finish line in the primaries, and they only wind up helping Democrats win in the general. I mean, don't take it from me. Take it from non-senators Blake Masters, Herschel Walker, and Mehmet Oz. Joining me now is David Jolly, former Republican congressman from Florida and MSNBC political analyst. David, you know, yesterday, um, a, 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 a source of mine uh, from Ohio, I asked which candidate were they concerned about um, you know, uh, you know, facing in the United States Senate. And they said basically the other two, other than Moreno, they, the one that they were enthusiastic about winning was Moreno, because this person who's like been in politics in Ohio, they were like, that's the one that we want, the Sherrod Brown team wants. D does Donald Trump yeah. work for Joe Biden secretly? Is he, is he trying to elect Joe Biden? <laughs> Yeah, Joy, Republicans keep learning all the wrong lessons. I mean, look, you can look at the past several cycles, and even Democrats would say Ohio is kind of slipping away from them. Until last night, when all of a sudden Republicans and Donald Trump say, hey, why don't we run Marino against the very popular Democratic incumbent and Sherrod Brown and give Sherrod Brown a chance not just of holding Ohio, but holding the Senate for Democrats. And you're exactly right. I mean, all the wrong lessons are look at Herschel Walker in Georgia, a pickup they should have had in 22. <laughs> look at Dr. Oz in Pennsylvania, one they could have had. And in Ohio, where they nominated J.D. Vance against Tim Ryan, J.D. Vance underperformed other statewide Republicans by about 20 points. Mike DeWine, two years ago, actually won, I think, by about 25 points, other statewide candidates in the high teens. J.D. Vance, with his level of Trumpian crazy, just bested Tim Ryan by six. So, like, Donald Trump and Republicans have decided, hey, let's go into November with a whole shoebox full of crazy, see if we can lose some races we otherwise should have won, and hand the United States Senate back to the Democrats. I mean, Kerry Lake in Arizona? Does this make any sense? Okay. <laughs> let, let, there, uh, plan B. Hey, you know what we're if, missing, Joy? Yeah. You'll, you'll remember this. Here's what we're missing from Republicans this cycle. I am not a witch. You remember <laughs> that? You remember the Delaware race? They At some point, a, a candidate this cycle will say, I'm not a witch. <laughs> I guess, maybe they should run a witch. It might actually be, then they could like maybe, you know, use them like sorcery to get to, to try to win. Um, the other plan B, plan B, impeach Joe Biden. Uh, but except for that all their witnesses are like, okay, we can't impeach Joe Biden. Here's Lev Parnas, who literally was one of the people who invented the scam, pretend, you know, Biden crimes. Here's Lev Parnas testifying in Capitol Hill. Everyone involved knew they were sharing lies. From Trump and Giuliani's shadow diplomacy, through my missions to Ukraine and elsewhere, to members of a BLT team, a group convened for the sole purpose of investigating and damaging the Bidens. Everything was for the ultimate benefit of Donald Trump and thereby Vladimir Putin. Because the team's investigations were centered around Biden and Ukraine, I was designated the point person in every matter they pursued. That is how that is how I know with certainty that these Biden stories un are untrue then and are untrue now. He, he mentions Vladimir Putin. In addition to that 
crap show today. Nine House Republicans, the nine you probably expect, voted against a resolution condemning the Russian abduction of Ukrainian children, David. They all yeah. were provided. <laughs> They're all trying to get Biden elected. Yeah. <laughs> what is happening? How are you against the abduction of children? What is happening? I'm there is no ideological justification for that vote. I don't know if it's just like owning the libs or I'm trying to make the news or I'm trying to best Marjorie Taylor Greene. It's, it's really odd to see Republicans vote like that. But I think what is not odd and what, what, what deserves further investigation is really this alliance with Putin's Russia. Because if Democrats were in control of the House right now, the real investigation that would be going on is how House Republican members have accepted and coordinated information with a known Russian asset who's now been charged by our Department of Justice. That now is at the root of this entire Hunter Biden investigation. And recall, it's not just about Hunter Biden now. The Russian asset that was proffering this story, and when we saw Giuliani peddling it, everything else that was going on, this is at the root of Donald Trump's very first impeachment. Right, when he was yeah. actually using the official powers of the White House to try to create this anti-Biden narrative, all that Republicans have left, left is Hunter Biden clearly went into business because his last name is Biden and attracted some clients. Well, if that's yeah. illegal in Washington, D.C., half the Republican Congress would be out of work. Everybody has to go to work. And then lastly, putting North Carolina back in play. Between the North Carolina governor, governor nominee, who says he likes the days when women couldn't vote, is now comparing Planned Parenthood, man with saggy yeah. pants, and the Klan. He says those are all the same thing. Plus, you've got the North Carolina public schools chief nominee, who's calling for the execution of President Obama and suggested killing Joe Biden. That's their candidates in North Carolina. Yeah. Joy, wild and crazy Republican candidates up and down the ballot. But I, I think if you look at this incrementally, right, you take a North Carolina that maybe Democrats need to make up about six points to, to win this. Now they've been gifted candidates that'll hand them three or four points right there. How do they make up the difference? This is a state where now the Dobbs decision really comes into play. Yes. Because not only are soft Republican candidates looking at their own, or soft Republican voters looking at their own candidates saying, no, I just can't do this. They're also yeah. being reminded that, wait a minute, this is the party That's that it. gave us Dobbs. This is a very good shot for Democrats in North Carolina. Uh, and even look, even in Maryland, where they're running somebody who's not for abortion rights, but he's supposed to be a normie, but he's also not for abortion rights. Even all of these candidates. Uh, David Jolly, thank you very much.